Hello, and this is my review of Megadeth's Peace Sells, But Who's Buying? In my opinion, one of the greatest heavy metal records ever made. Uh, also, it is for me the album where Megadeth surpassed Metallica. Now, for the, this is a very early Sabbath. It, this is what it reminds me of is early Black Sabbath. Now, at this time, I'm going to go into a little bit of history, not too long. Uh, Dave and the band at this time was under Combat Records. They pretty much didn't like it and pushed to get put on another la big label until they got signed to Capitol. That's pretty much that. Uh, it's the first record to feature Vic Rattlehead on it, which became very significant because he went on for, I believe, the next couple albums and then was no longer... Well, he became the band mascot, let's just put it that way. Uh, this is also the last album to feature the original Megadeth lineup. I'll go into probably detail about it later in the video. Yes, this album features Waking Up Dead, The Conjuring, Peace Cells, Devil's Island, Good Morning Black Friday, Bad Omen, I Ain't Superstitious, and My Last Words. Which that's the track list. If you want my individual rating of each song, I'll probably put it in the description bar. I, I tried to do this video earlier, and each video I do seems to always end up to be half hour, so I'm trying to compress this in a little time. If you want me to post my other videos or other review of this up later, just comment, comment and say that I'd like to see the video. Uh, this is a really heavy album in terms of songs and just in terms of an entire album it's very very heavy very if you listen to early black sabbath you know really where i'm coming from when i mean really heavy heavy metal uh waking up dead this song is typical thrash it's very heavy hard fast playing uh, featured some great solos in it. Dave's voice talking very slowly at the beginning, and then busting into his normal Dave punk rock like voice. Uh, song number. Oh, yes, and this also features some really great in this entire album. I'll say this probably repeatedly. Gar Samuelson is a machine on this album. He's great on this record. Uh, song 2, The Conjuring. Now this is about the time where Dave was really into the occult and witchcraft around this time and the devil and all this. And it really comes out in The Conjuring, Good Morning Black Friday, Bad Omen. Very much so. Those songs. The Conjuring is also very important to this album because this is on this album Dave soloed this entire album. All the solos are Dave, which is actually kind of shocking, and it really started, I think, to show what would become of Chris Poland and all that. The next song is probably, this is by this time, their most famous, Peace Cells. Uh, this is probably the first thrash metal record to get a pretty much to get a music video, I think. I'm not sure about this. Comment if I'm wrong. I'm not sure. But the famous part of the video where the kid, or where the father walks in and the kid's there, says, turn it, I want to watch the news, and the kid turns back and he's like, this is the news, and it really hit you very well. Uh, also about this song, it is probably one of the first Megadeth songs to feature Dave Ellison on bass, or not on bass, like feature him, but really show him off a lot. Yeah, that's, and also another thing, the solos split up, and it was really good to hear the mixture of Dave and Chris on this. Uh, the next song, Devil's Island. Now, Devil's Island is probably, especially the opening riff, is one of the most reused Megadeth riffs. It's very, very simple, straightforward, easy opening riff. But it reminds me a lot of Euthanasia. I know uh, Good Morning Black Friday parts had this dan, 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 
sort of menacing part to it. And also about Devil's Island. The drumming in it was superb, and the vocals and the lyrics. This is another thing I'm going to come up on a lot in this record. The lyrics are awesome in this record. Very much a great song. It, it really shows a great song. Now the next song on this record is Good Morning Black Friday. This is, to me, in my top five greatest Megadeth songs ever. This is how good this song is. The opening is very clean. Now for about every song after this, pretty much except I Ain't Superstitious, was very clean. Very, very in that manner. Now, also it features probably some of Chris Poland's best work on solos in this song. Was On this album was on this song. Very much. And it showed quite a bit. Now, uh, this song is also very, very technical, too. Now, in a way, if you listen to this, it's also, you go later on uh, to uh, In My Darkest Hour, even in The Foreclosure of a Dream, it's a very technical song to play. And even the lyrics, the lyrics very much so, very, say, very much more on Black Friday. You know, Black Friday is more back to traditional Megadeth after they did this, and it really showed a lot with the lyrics and Satan and all this, that he really focused on that quite a bit on this song. Now, next song on the album, again, very clean intro, Bad Omen, which featured a, sort of, was a sabbath light intro to the album in a way that it really 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 was heavy it really and also Gar Samuelson's drumming on this and Dave Elfson's bass playing on this was just superb it was awesome to just hear Gar Samuelson's like -na 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 -na, and then nothing like wow and then even going back to Devil's Island even Elfson's bass parts where it was like and then it went to a bass part, and then bam, and then back then to a bass part. So they were really showing them off in this album. Uh, I Ain't Superstitious. Now, this is a cover of Howlin' Wolf, or not Howlin' Wolf, uh, Willie Dixon. It was covered by Howlin' Wolf and Jeff Beck and many countless others through the years. Uh, Megadeth also is very known for their covers at this time, because they did on Killing Is My Business, Business Is Good, These Boots. And these, and there was a line that I'm not sure if he meant this, or I know he meant it because he wrote it, but the part where he said, uh, one of these days these boots are going to stomp all over you, I really wonder if he's taking a shot at Metallica there. If, if you feel so free, feel free to comment on that part. I know there's a bit of me talking about Metallica in there, but I just can't help it because at the time it was what it was. Now, also after this album, they do Anarchy of USA, No More Mr. Nice Guy, and then for a long time it was nothing until they covered A Two Le Monde again, which was one of his own songs, so technically it still was a cover, it's just an extension of the song he did already. But, no, nothing bad I can say about I Hate Superstitious, it was actually good, it showed Megadeth in a great light. It was very, very, it wasn't as hard, it didn't have the satanic sort of lyrics that were in previous songs, like Bad Omen, Good Moon, or Black Friday, and The Conjuring. It wasn't that part of it. Now on to the final song, My Last Words. Another clean intro, I can't harp that enough, but this was the perfect song to end the album. It, it's the song, if you read the lyrics, it's about Russian Roulette. It's very simple, straightforward. The drumming and bass playing in this was great. This song really was enhanced, and I think a lot of songs were enhanced by Dave's lyrics, and a lot of it was enhanced by Dave Ellison and Gar Samuelson. A lot. Chris, this is something I'll say about this. 
I don't really mention a lot of Chris Poland on this album because Chris Poland wasn't, or how do I put this correctly, he, he, he's very typical in his approach to a solo that just becomes repetitive after a while. Now, after this, now this band is also a very tight band to play thrash, and especially some of the songs they played on this album, you had to be a very tight band to play it. Not discounting Chris Poland or anything, but Dave, with Mustaine Ellison and Samuelson really had a great chemistry together. But yeah, uh, after the, this, they toured on this album for a while, which also sort of led to the end of the original Megadeth of the time because Gar Samuelson and Chris Poland's drug habits just became so big that they couldn't control them anymore. Gar couldn't play half the time at this point. And, uh, Chris was hawking their equipment for drugs, so Dave got fed up one day and fired them all and said, you're gone, and replaced them. And next album would feature Jeff Young and Belcher, and then we move on to Friedman and Menza, and I'll say this right now, I'll probably do a video on this, like of guys that tried out for Megadeth, post, so far, so good, so what, and in between Rust and Peace, so yeah. Also about this album is the UN became a very, this and Rust and Peace became very much, the UN was in there, like, front cover shows Vic right by a for sales, right by a for sale sign, and the UN is in the background, so it's, and it's also at the Cold War, so the orange is the aftermath of Tom's Blast. Uh, how would I rate this album? I'd give it a 9.5 out of 10. Now I know I'm being picky, there's some parts that were great and they could have enhanced a little bit, and there's some parts where just turn it down, or just, just little technical things that I'm just picking out, and it's not... I, if you give this album a 10 out of 10, I wouldn't blame you if you gave it a 10 out of 10, but that's just my opinion. It's a very heavy record. It's very heavy. If you're not used to very heavy, heavy, heavy men music, it, it would be a shock to listen to this record. Yes, I suggest buy this record. It's a great record, great album. It's worth pretty much 20 bucks. Like, if you find it for 20 bucks, it's worth it, hands down. Uh, I don't suggest downloading it. The only time I ever have downloaded an album is when it's pretty much out of print where I can't find it anymore. And I want to listen to it and actually hear the album. So I might download it. That type of downloading I have no problem with. If it's a brand new album and I'll be so fine, please buy it. And another thing about Megadeth is I tell this to people I know, you can never go wrong buying a Megadeth record. Uh, from Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good Till 13, there's not really, there's some that people like more than others, but there's, every album has its points to it, has its things. And yeah, that's my review of these cells, but who's buying? Also, I'd like to give a shout out to Chainsaw Gears 12, if any, if you're looking for a great reviewer or just somebody who talks about music on YouTube, he's probably one of the best that I know of that I really enjoy listening to. He has very interactive. Now, for my next couple videos, it's probably going to be topics, a couple topics I have. I know the first one's going to piss people off. It's, uh, is Sabbath. Black Sabbath legitimately Black Sabbath. It, it was just something that came up. I was talking to a friend about it, and I thought I'd do a topic about it. And even first one I'm probably going to do is uh, Rock and Roll Hall theme bands that should or shouldn't be in there, and that's my thoughts on that. So yeah, like, subscribe, comment down below, and that's my review of Peace Sells But Who's Buying. Till next time, peace. And also another thing about this is uh, September 19th, 1986, when this album was released, it also is very significant because Cliff Burton died about a week later, a week, week and a half later, and it became a very big 
anything in metal, so that's that.